a good morning to you all. And uh, thank you for joining this ACE Agricultural Center of Excellence Virtual Field Day by Zimbabwe Agricultural Knowledge and Innovation Services Project, the Zakis Project. My name is Rollings and I am with Agribusiness Media and I do hope that you will benefit from this today's event. We are also live on our Agribusiness Media Facebook page and also the Zimbabwe Agricultural Knowledge and Innovation Services Project Facebook page. So in this event today, we are joined by Wadlaf Sanso. He is the head of the Zakis project. And we also have Mr. S. Nyama from Chibero Agricultural Center of uh, Excellence, Mr. Taruona from uh, Chibero Agricultural Center of Excellence, Mr. Wabata Gore, Agritex Officer in Chegutu. We also have Mr. Z. Gonzo, Ziwanae Gonzo, he is with ZFC, uh, Mambo Chiwoto with Superfet and uh, Brian, uh, he is with Prime Seed Co. We also have Shingi from uh, K2 Seeds. So to our participants, if you have any question, please use the chat section. Our panelists will be able to respond to your questions after the presentations. So let's go straight into the business of the day. We now invite Ward Love. He is the head of the Sakis project for the opening remarks. Good morning. Welcome to the Agriculture Center of Excellence Field Day. And where I'm located here today is one of the centers of excellence that we have established under the Zimbabwe Agricultural Growth Program. The centers of excellence are at the core of the implementation of the, the Zakis program, which is what uh, has brought us uh, here today. And it's funded by the European Union. The idea around the centers of excellence is that they are centers that will demonstrate best practice agriculture um, within uh, the farming community. It does not really matter which uh, farming cluster you come from, whether it's A1, small scale, large scale. The idea is that we use the centers of excellence to demonstrate best practice. I will, before I, I continue, I'll just quickly take you through the Zakis program. The Zakis program or the Zimbabwe Agricultural Knowledge and Innovation Services is is at the core of the establishment of these centers of excellence and it is it is implemented under four result areas um, result area one being uh, the establishment of an enabling environment that result area of which our centers of excellence are established there's also some policy work under that result area result area two is the strengthening of extension services result area three extension uh, strengthening of education Result area four, uh, the strengthening of uh, agricultural research. So in line with demonstrating best practice in agriculture, I am standing next to a smart weather station, which is powered by DACOM or established or set up by a company called uh, DACOM. The idea is to, dem like I mentioned, to demonstrate best practice. Farmers need weather information. And one of the things that we are striving to promote is localized weather information. Therefore, a smart weather station of this nature will be found at all our agricultural centers of excellence. So at this point in time, allow me to, to say thank you for listening in, and please do enjoy the rest of the field day, and I do hope you will learn one or two things. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Wadlaf, for the opening remarks. So we are starting off with cabbage production presentation by Mr. S. Nyama from Chibero Agricultural Center of Excellence. Good day, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Chibero College of Agriculture. Uh, it's now Chibero College uh, is now an agricultural center of excellence 
where we are exhibiting uh, high standards in crop production. So at this horticultural section, you can see we have got a cabbage crop, which is almost ready for marketing. This cabbage crop was established early uh, February and is now ready. Its variety is uh, Fabiola uh, from Prime Seed. Uh, the <coughs> cabbage is, uh, takes about 70 days to maturity and uh, it's uh, actually preferred most by farmers. So with cabbage production, for you to be successful in establishing cabbages, you must do all the agronomic practices right. That is starting from land preparation, uh, raising of seedlings, pest and disease control, and so, and irrigation. Here we are using drip irrigation. Drip irrigation has got an advantage in that you don't use a lot of water. Water is placed directly where it is required. So here we had the problems of water. But when we started the drip irrigation that was supported by the Zakis program, we started to produce at a very large scale. Like now, we have got 0 0.2 hectares under uh, irrigation. We also have enough vegetables to feed our students. Normally we have 120 students and we also have enough to sell to the surrounding com communities and also to other uh, retail outlets. So really drip irrigation is the way to go, right? For this uh, crop, uh, Fabiola, we had to buy seedlings from Prime Seed Go. Uh, the seedlings were ready and they were at around uh, six weeks old. So we prepared our land. We first disked the land, then made a fine tilth, then also made beds. Our beds are 1.2 meters in width and 25 meters long. With drip irrigation, you don't have to have the line too long because otherwise you have problems of pressure. So our drip irrigation design is 20, 25 meters long and there's enough pressure for water to, uh, to be provided to every plant. We had to uh, apply uh, lime first. In fact, the lime was applied about two, 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 two months before the establishment of the of the cabbages. So when the cabbages were ready, we had to dig out holes spaced at 60 by 50 centimeters. In horticulture, it's very important to 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 produce what is actually required by the consumers. Some want small cabbages, some want big cabbages. But if you are aiming at big cabbages, it means you have to space them uh, a little bit far from the other. So we are uh, planning to develop or to grow a cabbage plant that will sell maybe at a dollar. So our spacing is a bit wider, which is 60 by 50 centimeters. But it can also, if you wanted small cabbages, you could also plant it at uh, 50 by 30. But for Fabiola, we used 60 by 50 centimeters. And we will produce a cabbage that has got a big head that is actually preferred by our local market. After having dug the planting stations, we came in with a compound fertilizer. We used compound C at a rate of 30 grams per hole. That fertilizer was put in a hole and worked in because if you just place it and then place the plant, the plant might succumb to uh, fertilizer burn. So you have to incorporate it within the rooting zone so that it is not concentrated on one place. 
And then after that, you, we came in with our transplants, which were from the float bed, and placed them and added a little bit of water so that they don't suffer stress. Then soon after having uh, planted the cabbages, we came in with lambda. Lambda is a synthetic pyrethroid that we use to uh, control pests like um, the, 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 the cutworm. One important thing with uh, vegetables, because they are so succulent and it was e, 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 in summer when we did this and there was a lot of uh, rain, the most difficult thing is to control pests. Pests like um, the Bagrada bug, pests like uh, the diamond back moth. Those are serious pests on cabbages. So you should be having a, a routine sprays of uh, synthetic pyrethroids to, to, to control those pests because there is a danger when the plant is still small and you don't control pests and they attack the apical um, bud, you have your plant having multiple heads and it will not develop into a head that is marketable. So it's very important that you guard against that and you should also be having uh, some extra seed in case it might be damaged then you can come and gap fill so that you have a uniform crop. Uh, then on fertilizers, that's the most important. Cabbages, they are heavy feeders. They require a lot of uh, this nitrogen fertilizer. So there is a regime that we follow when we are applying uh, a, a top dressing fertilizer, especially ammonium nitrate. Cabbages will respond well and uh, <coughs> have their full potential if the following fertilizer, to, the, to, the following top dressing fertilizer regime is followed. The first seven days you apply five grams of um, AN, then after another seven days, that is at 14 days, you apply again another five grams. Then at 21 grams, at one, 21 days, you apply again another five grams and at 28 days you apply the last five grams. So all in all you need about 20 grams. Thereafter you won't need any more fertilizers. So it's very important that you put or you apply your AN during the first month of the growth of the, of the cabbage plant this you will ensure it uses it and it expresses its full potential just like if you look at this head here you see it's now very big and we will no longer be using fertilizers that's for the an for the basal fertilizers like i said we used cap number 30 that was incorporated into the wall and worked into the soil for pest control, I've mentioned three pests, the Bagrada bug, uh, the cutworm, and the, also the aphid. These pests, they need to be controlled on routine basis, which means someone has to come in and do the scouting wherever you are going to see whether the level of infestation warrants uh, application because sometimes there might be more predators than the pest then in this case it might not be very necessary for one to apply but if there are more of those pests and if you quickly come in then you keep the population of pests suppressed what culture is very intensive and we have to observe a lot of um, uh, hygiene, which would include rotations. It is not actually good practice to be repeating a, a same a crop in the same bed. So here, where we have these cabbages, 
last time we had tomato crop. So this will help in suppressing diseases. It will also help in the utilization of the nutrients. So this is very important if you are going to be a very successful farmer. You have to plan your, your garden so much that you actually have a very good rotation. Maybe a three or a four crop rotation is enough where you would put the cabbage plant or the leaf vegetable, then that can be followed by tomato and maybe next it is followed by a root crop, carrot or onion or in the other crop you put in a bean crop. So that actually maintains the soil health in terms of diseases, in terms of nutrient availability. Okay, uh, thank you there, Mr. Nyama, for that great uh, presentation. We will now have comments from uh, the following or our panelists and in the following order, we have Brian from Prime Seed Co. Uh, he will comment on varietal performance, then Mambo Chiwoto. Um, okay. We have Mambo Chiwoto uh, from uh, Superfet. Uh, he'll comment on uh, soil health and also Ziwanae Gonzo on crop health. So uh, Brian from Prime Seed Co, uh, you can go for it. Just two minute uh, comments on cabbage production. And just a reminder to our participants, if you have any question, please just use the chat section and our panelists will be able to respond to your questions uh, after their presentations. Thank you. Yeah, hello everyone from, uh, from Sidco. And uh, <clears throat> just to, to, to run uh, you through our, um, our, our, our cabbage basket, okay. Uh, one would ask, uh, why would I, 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 I fall in love with, um, with, with Sidco cabbage varieties, okay? Uh, there are many reasons for that. Uh, number one, uh, our, our variety of the uh, produce um, a, a uniform uniform a uniform crop uh, in terms of shape, in terms of shape uh, size color and uh... thank thank thanks thank thank you Mkoma uh, and uh, thank you all for 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 attending this uh, webinar and I would also like to thank the the first presenter he, he touched the uh, uh, on most of the you know key issues regarding crop health and uh, i just want to add a few more issues um uh, number one uh the issue to do with the diseases uh there's one you know devastating disease when it comes to cabbage production mainly in in in, in summer uh, the the black rot you no know, disease which is which is uh, caused by by you know, a bacteria called Xanthomonas campaign stress. And uh, as you know, most bacterial diseases are difficult, you know, to, 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 to control once they manifest. So I would urge our farmers to, to use a, a, a product that is called the uh, Bion. Bion is very good uh, for, 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 for black rot. Bion is not a, is not a a, a fungicide rather but it's 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 a it's an immune booster and uh, it it boosts the immune the defense you know mechanism of of the plant to fight the disease when it comes so it's best to have your bion in your basket when you are doing uh, mainly your winter 
uh, uh, sorry, your summer cabbage when we receive too much rain. And uh, we would encourage farmers to apply uh, 25 to 50 grams per hectare, uh, start, starting from week two after, after planting at seven to 10 day intervals. And uh, they do maximum of three to uh, four sprays. Also, another disease that is uh, devastating in brassicas is, is, is your doni mildew, where farmers can use a, a copper or their mango as, a, as preventive sprays and then come in with their metal men. Metal men contains a metal axial plus mango. It can be used as a, as, as, as a curative uh, uh, you know, uh, fungicide. Then another issue to do uh, with the uh, cabbage production is you have seen the guy who was spraying, you see, you saw that uh, the spray uh, solution was not sticking. It was just rolling over and falling down because your brassicas have got waxy leaves. So I would uh, uh, advise our farmers to uh, add stickers when they are spraying their brassicas, brassicas and alliums, your onion, uh, uh, garlic have got two waxy leaves. Uh, so the spray won't, you know, won't last. It will not stick onto the leaves It will just roll over and, and, and fall down. So it's best you use stickers uh, when you're spraying. And also the issue to do with rotation that the first presenter uh, touched on, it's, it's very good because you'll be you know, breaking uh, your, your disease cycles. Um, uh, I think that's all I can say uh, regarding soil, soil health because of our time. Okay, uh, thank you very much uh, for the insightful comments. Next presentation on maize production. Uh, by Mr. Taruona. He is with Chibero Agricultural Center of Excellence. My name is Clemens Taruona. I'm a lecturer at Chibero College and also a, a coordinator for the Sakis project. We are talking of uh, maize production. Uh, there are many parameters that uh, are considered in maize production that can uh, result in either a good yield or uh, a failure of a good yield. Uh, where we are now, this is a typical example of a very good uh, crop of maize. A very good crop of maize is characterized by uh, the number of lines that you are going to get on, on the cob and also the, the depth of the, the, the kennels that you find on the cob. So in, in simple terms, you are supposed to have a maize cob that has got a very small cob, the, the core inside and the, the, the major part of the, 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 the cob must be covered with the grain. So in order to achieve that, there are several things that the farmers should uh, take into cons uh, consideration for you to have for you to have a maize crop like this one. So this is a typical example of a very good maize. You can see by the size of the, of, of the stock, well, it is the stock that determines the, the, the size or the weight of the grain. So the stock must be strong because that's the dry matter that is going to be turned into maize grain. It must also have a, a, that cob that is a little bit longer you can see uh, by this cob that I'm holding here that is, it is almost the size of my arm. So that again is going to give you yield as a farmer. So very short cobs, sometimes they don't yield much, but uh, the, the maize variety is supposed to express its potential. So the potential must come from the agronomic practices that the farmer should put in place to have that good maize. Let me move on to those parameters that I've talked about that are very important in maize production. We're going to start with soil health. Soil is very important. 
what it is from the soil that the maize crop is going to get the nutrients that it requires. Before the farmers establish a maize crop, they are supposed to send their, their soils for analysis. Soil analysis is very important. Uh, maybe mo many farmers disregard that, but that's the starting point of a good crop. The, the soil has to be tested for a variety of nutrients uh, which are inherent in the soil, and also it has to be tested for pH. pH is very critical in soil health. Even if the farmer is going to put a lot of fertilizer, a lot of uh, uh, manure in the field, as long as pH is wrong, the crop is not going to utilize the nutrients. So soil health is very important. So in this field, uh, we applied uh, the general recommendation of, uh, of lime just to condition the soil. So it was uh, about 2,000 kgs per hectare. That's the general recommendation for, for the lime that we used. You can see by the, the soils that these soils are sandy. So sandy soils in Zimbabwe are characterized by a very low acidity. So you have to condition the soil so that you erase acidity of the soil a little bit from 5.5 maybe to 6, there about. Then you are going to likely have a very good crop of maize. The other thing that farmers should take into consideration on soil health is the fertility of the soil. After testing, you are going to get results. The results will tell you the inherent fertility of the soil. So it is up to, farm, to the farmer to now uh, improve the fertility of the, the maize crop. How do you do that? You are going to use recommendations from soil analysis where there is that gap between the inherent fertility and the fertility that is required by that type of a crop, in this case, the maize. So that balance is supposed to be covered by the application of the recommended rates of fertilizer. Then we move on to the other parameter which is very important for farmers to take note of. The time of establishing a crop. Time of establishment is very important. Uh, with maize uh, crop, you are supposed to establish your maize before 25 November. That's the, the recommended period. That's the cut-off period. Before 25 November, then you are guaranteed of a better yield. Anything after 25 November, it is said the farmer is going to lose about 50 kgs of maize per hectare per day. So when you, you plant your maize late, you are actually doing yourself a disservice. You are just losing yield for nothing. The maize is supposed to be established during that uh, period before 25 November. Then the farmer is guaranteed of a, a better yield. Uh, the other parameter which is very important for farmers to take note of is the weed management. Weed management is very, very important. Was weeds compete with the maize crop, with the any crop in fact. So they compete for moisture that is in the soil, they compete for the nutrients that are in the soil, they also compete for space. So that competition, uh, with this, uh, the crops that we grow, they are not very competitive as compared to weeds because of the genetics of the weeds. The weeds have got a general genome, or a general genetics, which means they are very adaptive, adaptive to any changes in, in the environment. Unlike our crops that we grow because some of the genes have been silenced. So they are not very good competitors. So weed competition with your crop is, is, is very important to, to farmers to take note of. They are supposed to control the weeds. In this field that you are looking at, uh, we use some herbicides. Pre-emergence herbicides and post-emergence herbicide that we use in order to, uh, to control the weeds like you are seeing. When you are doing maize, when it comes to weed control, the first three weeks of, uh, of a crop establishment are very important. The, the field is supposed to be weed free. If the field is uh, infested with weeds in the first three weeks, the maize would already uh, have that uh, yield even before you go to the fourth week. The maize would give you the yield that it is capable of producing. So farmers don't, don't, don't take note of that one because maybe probably that information is not uh, uh, readily available to them. The first three weeks are very critical in weed control for you to have a better, better crop. The other parameter that the farmers are supposed to take note of is uh, pest and disease control. With maize, maize crop, we don't have a lot of uh, pests that attack 
a, the maize crop. When the maize crop is healthy, sometimes it is tolerant to most of these pests uh, and diseases. So farmers are, are supposed to do some scouting. Each and every time they get into their field, they scout for pests, they scout for diseases. The other aspect that is important for maize production for farmers is uh, the choice of a, a good variety. There are a lot of varieties that are being uh, grown by farmers out there. But uh, you find sometimes farmers would choose a wrong variety for the, for the area. So choice of a variety is very important. They have to listen to agritechs, what they are saying, the, the suitable uh, variety of the maize that is suitable for their environment is very important. Land preparation is very, very important. Most farmers fail to achieve the desi their desired yield uh, simply because they did land preparation the wrong way. Land preparation is supposed to be done way, way before the, the start of the rain so that the farmer will have that time to prepare the land. So it is uh, encouraged for farmers maybe soon after harvesting to get into land preparation when the soil is still moist so they can prepare their land soon after harvesting in preparation for the, for the next season or the next crop. This is very advantageous to farmers because one, they are going to save on the cost of, of, of draft, draft power. When you, you are going to pay your land when the soil is dry, is dry. If you are using tractors, you are going to use a lot of diesel. At the same time, you are also going to destroy the soil structure. So early land preparation should be key so that farmers would save on, 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 on the cost of land preparation. It is also important to prepare the land earlier because you are also going to conserve moisture. You are also going to conserve moisture. When the land, the land is prepared, while it is, it is moist, there is that principle of uh, mulching that takes place. When the, the top layer is disturbed, then the moisture is likely to be uh, preserved underneath. So that's very important. Uh, some farmers would prefer to prepare their land when the rains come. Yes, if they have, uh, if they have that machinery that is capable of doing that uh, so that they can establish their crop before the 25th of November, it's okay, they can do that. But if they don't have that machinery or if they are not endowed with a lot of that machinery that is going to take them before the cut-off day, it is important that they prepare their, la their land. Uh, before the start of the season. So, when the land is prepared, we don't want a land that is uh, prepared when it, the soil is dry because you are going to have a lot of clothes. Those clothes, <coughs> they are going to destroy soil structure. At the same time, it is going to be very difficult for you to bring in machinery when you want to do planting. The soil should be prepared to such an extent that we achieve what we call a fine till. There are no clothes, there are no disturbances. So when you bring your planter, the planter is going to place the maize uh, seed on the precise area that you want to, it to be. So the use of machinery when the land is well prepared becomes easier for the farmer. Then uh, the other part that is also very important in maize production is plant population. Plant population is too pronged. Sometimes uh, farmers would underpopulate which means they are growing less crops per hectare. It is a disservice to them because they are not going to achieve the desired yield per hectare that is required for them. Other farmers would go the other way. They put a lot of plants on a, on a single hectare, which means there is overpopulation of, of the crop. Overpopulation is very disadvantageous because the plants that are overpopulated they are going to compete for everything. They are going to compete for the available moisture in the soil. They are also going to compete for the available nutrients in the soil. They are going to compete for the space that is there and also competition for air. So it is good for the farmers to, to take note of plant population because it can affect their yield. At the same time, they should not also underpopulate because it is also a cost to them. They will have less yield than the potential of that land.
Thank you, Mr. Tarwana, for that great presentation on maize production. We now invite comments from our panelists. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mkoma Rollins. Uh, I would like to thank Mr. Tarwona for a, a lengthy and a rich presentation. He touched uh, on most of the areas uh, regarding uh, um, crop health. Uh, but I would just want to add a few more you know, items. First of all, I would like to, 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 to appreciate what our local you know, seed houses are doing regarding uh, breeding of uh, good genetics. Uh, you know, in maize, we no longer talk uh, about uh, gray leaf spot and other diseases. Uh, so diseases are no longer a big, big issue when it comes to maize production in, in Zimbabwe. Uh, but uh, we see we have a, a number of pests that threaten maize production. Uh, for example, there are farmers in areas where the populations of white crab are quite high, uh, so much so that by the time they harvest, uh, uh, most of their crop will be on the ground, as well as the uh, termites. So there are a number of you know uh, solutions that they can 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 be uh, used in order to get away with uh, such you know, problems. Uh, when it comes to white grub, we recommend our farmers to apply uh, clopyrifos before they even cover their, their seed. And uh, when it comes to termites, we are recommending farmers to use the imidacloprid uh, around the uh, a tenth week after 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 you know emergence, then we have this devastating pest uh, that's called the uh, uh, fall armyworm. Yeah, it's 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 an emergent you know pest, but uh, causing serious uh, uh, destruction in maize production. So whenever you are planning to do maize, make sure you have a your solutions in your chemical basket. We have a number of products that fight a uh, fall armyworm. And fall armyworm is, is, a, is, a, is a Lepidoptera worm. So it's very easy to control, but you have to come in early before it uh, hides uh, below the frass because it produces frass. Then it, it, it hides. Uh, be, be below the frass, uh, so much so that uh, if you try to come in with any control measures, uh, it, it will be difficult for you to get you know, uh, in touch with it. So we have a number of uh, products on the market, the, the likes of your Spike Extra. Uh, Spike Extra is a combination of emamectin benzoate and the uh, acetamide Or for army, or for army worm control, and uh, one other disease that the presenter maybe did not touch on is the the one to do with the maize trick, you know, maize trick disease caused by 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 uh, leaf hoppers, and uh, this disease is uh, devastating, uh, mainly on uh, if 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 uh, farmers do their maize off season like those who are into green millets production and those who come in early, say in October with their maize, uh, I would urge such farmers to treat their seed with, uh, with, with imidacloprid. Uh, it's very good. Uh, it's, it's a good seed dressing. And suppose you fail to apply your imidacloprid, uh, you may need to come in with a with, uh, with the uh, with diamethoid uh, that you can spray the area surrounding your your crop, uh, 50 meters surrounding your crop, uh, so that you destroy the leaf hoppers before they uh, come uh, into your into into your into your crop. Then uh, one other thing there. 
that I just want to add when it comes to uh, herbicide use is uh, that in for, 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 for the choice of herbicide to use, you need to understand uh, the width spectrum in your field. Uh, what are the major widths that trouble you in your field for you to make a good choice? Then uh, one other thing is to understand or to know the follow-up you know, crop that is the crop that you are going to plant after you remove your maize, because some weeds have got you know longer residual periods uh, in the in the in the soil. So it's very critical for you to understand the weed spectrum, to understand uh, what crop will be coming after after removing or removing your 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 your, your maize, and whether you want to use a pre emergent herbicide or, 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 or a post emergent herbicide. Uh, because of our time, I think I can end here, Mr. President. Thank you. Okay, thank you uh, once again, Mr. Ziwanai, for those uh, insightful uh, comments. So we move on to our next uh, presentation, it's uh, on sugar bean production. And uh, the presentation is by Mr. Wabata Gore. Uh, he is an extension uh, officer uh, in Chegut. Eh, Magadi Varin. No, Dr. Tamberakuti Tosset Riva Penu. E, to da kutambira zvaka zvakare kuti tino mafamba zvakanaka kubva kumatunha akasiyana siyana kuda kara masvika pano e handina mazwi mazhinji ando da kuti nditaure asi ndoda kuzvisa kuti eno mchidimbu indi no bata gore e ndiri muri mis asi tiri pano nokuda kwe chirongwa che field day padzingai namo cooperative E, pano pataka mira mumunda we beans e regai kudandisa tinda shika kuti beans iri rakajika rarini uye ivhera kuti ipi regai nditi ini takatanga kuti talent preparation yedu takarima pana hapa ne gejo tapedza kurima ne gejo takadiska tapedza kudiska Takacheka maraini. Yatino to raw marking. Ne tractor. Ndu ya kamaka maraini panap. At about 50 centimeters inter raw. Kana chiti inter raw. Ndikurewa. The interval. Kana the distance between. Two lines. Zembeo. Kupapa line iri. Kuinda pa line iri. Ndiyo inter raw yedu. Saka, e, tapeza kucheka maraini. Taka, taka mwaya fertilizer maraini. Area yedu, generally, beans rino iri. Is about a hectare. We planted about, sorry, kuda ndo, ndo, ndo tamasanga nsirwa. Ndaka nchi pinza kachirungu, ne, ne shona. We, we, we planted at a seed rate of about 100 kgs per hectare. So this is in, 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 in seed rate about 100 kgs of seed used here. Variety edu pana pa iri bounty. Ndiyo ataka jikara pana. Right, zwakanaka. Eh... Takashansa fertilizer yedu at 5 bags per hectare compound D. Ndiya takashansa pan up. Saka takashansa compound D. Wangu wano iti mezi fed. But generally, kuno kutunoti compound D. Bosti kati mezi fed. Shinuri watu itenda kubi. Kuchibagwe. Right, saka naka. Saka binzi takari jigara. Msuwa 3 match. And uh, this virus is a determinant virus. Zinorewa kuti, ino gona kuti, paku, paku jigaro, ayamera, panumbu itapakakudambuka kwe maspels, emvura. 
kakudambu kae kako akai miss akano imisa kuti irambe chizo ichizonya tsobereka zvakanaka saka ndo tichiti determinant variety kasikana yanga ya determinant ndo pataiti su inogona kuti kukamboita ka dry spell mvura ikazouya kana kuti pakaita i challenge yemvura ye moisture inogona kuzosumudzira ichinda mberi regarding to our sheet e bins redu ramera e rakamera after about 5 days anyway nokuti kwai pisa e 3 days after after emergence takamwaya mushonga uno edazinon mushonga uno dzi dazinon unomwaiwa at that stage Three days after emergence, uh, seven days to eight days after emergence, thirteen days after emergence, and finally twenty-one days after emergence. Richirebe, uh, pane one very dangerous pest in Oraya beans, in the bean stem maggot. Iyo yoka na ekataza o kontrolewa, mu beans. Leno pana hapa tichuona shutu na shwe binzi kufapa za kamera kushika hiko shino. Leno tichuona shutu na. It's a very dangerous pest in sugar beans. So, we have that routine spray of about four times at, starting at three days after emergence up to 21 days. Tapet za neji ne beans te magot. Right. Well, we of course had a challenge, a, a bit of some challenge kukuno kuku kuku beans ne cape mountain refuel beetle cmb inojika maru wawo but of course we have managed to overcome it as you can see boz kana kwanga kuri kukuti iri mose sha ino fani la kuti itike ene sha kare tusi nga woni maru waka blue mai saka panungo tanga beans kuita maru wa we come in we first scout kana tika wona Ma 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 beetles are. We come in with a synthetic parathroid. Kanata mwaya. Tato peza. Dam ziko guru guru. Atinga ishi zivirira. You'd find you can see. Zindere beans. Irichitaza o tri ukura. Asinga ishi sinaka na marua. A pez kwa. Ni Cape Mountain do free beetle. To know what a challenge, of course, yeah, yeah, Leothis up on a pap. Ne, ne, ma loopers. Ma same looper. I know, jika ma pods when they develop. We, 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 we don't manifest such a challenge. Especially, taka test out the beans. They do right as kutura jika rokuma waka watidi, wati ende. Right. Say, taka funga kujikara beans. Iri at this stage. Anyway, maybe nisa inda shikai kukore gaindi tini. Variety it takes about 115 days to get to physiological maturity. Ya tunoti physiological maturity ndiyo yokuti iyo pachayo beans rai vajo kukoeka. That's about 115 days anyway. Beans ready. Right, so kanaka. E, donzo redu. Se desi kutitite. Kanajiti desi anyway. Ndikuwa uh, District Agricultural Center of Excellence. Wind, I mean, weeding here was done manually. Takato tibari maatidi kutititombo shansa mae besides. Toda zunjiri practical ends, and hands on kwa muri. Ndoku saka taka tibari mingati sakurei, shuwa paka sakuru wana mapadza. Nukuti akambo itaka challenge kesora. Nukuti bins redu itaka rijikara during... That was soon after the rains because I couldn't bona and vrai nom soro vapatakarigara. Sakatino nya sa we are we are upkeeping it no kudin no kuto diri zazamur kuona. Saka yield yedu especially looking at this variety is about 1.2 tons per hectare. Right. Uh, we are likely to achieve close to that range. Ne makaye management practice ya takaita, which we think is actually in line with the agronomic principles related. Saka, we, we, we are almost to, to, to that level. 
as we assume, especially kana tikaramba futi tichi, tichi unyatso wana mvura ichi nyatso ilatakanaka. In brief, ndo masuka angu. Thank you very much there, Mr. Wabata Gore, for the great uh, presentation. So we uh, have a few questions here, and uh, maybe our panelists uh, can make some comments on uh, the bean production. Then we go into, we, we actually take uh, just a few questions. We have received a number of questions, but we, because of our time, we'll just take a maximum of three. Um, so we will now invite comments from, um, okay. So uh, Mr. Gonzo, maybe just comments to this video, uh, the, just a quick comments before we go into our uh, question and answer. Ah, thank you. Thank you, Mkoma Rollins. Uh, I would like to thank Mr. Bata for, 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 for quite an informative you know, presentation. Uh, he actually hit the nail right on the head when he talked about Pins Telmagot and the CMRB2. Yeah, that was quite informative and uh, there's nothing I can add you know, to that. But uh, when it comes to soil bond pests, because whenever you plant your seed, you know, it, it is threatened by, by a wide range of pests. In the soil, there are soil pests, there are also soil bone diseases, uh, like your rhizoctonia and other soil bone fungi you're dumping off. So I would encourage farmers to, to, to treat their seed uh, with the different seed dressings, like your, your thyram, uh, your, 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 your apron star. And if you treat your seed with apron star, you won't have challenges uh, with the with, uh, bean stem maggot. So it, it, it's very good to make sure that you plant, you know, treated seed because most the seed that is sold on the market uh, comes untreated. So I would urge farmers to treat their seed on the farm. Then uh, there are also issues to do with, uh, with the diseases like your bacterial blight, like your, like your rust, uh, which affect your sugar bean crop. So I would urge farmers to and come in with preventive sprays of your, your copper, oxychloride, even your, your mango zip or uh, your, your bravo. Uh, they, they are very good uh, preventive you know, uh, sprays. In case that the rust is now uh, affected the crop, they can now invoke you know, control measures like the use of your of your triazos like your tebuconazole, your, your, your tridiminal, your diphenoconazole, uh, those products can be used to control uh, uh, rust. Then in terms of uh, uh, weed control, uh, Mr. Abata Gore said they did not use any, 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 any herbicides. Uh, they had reasons for that, but to those who would want to use herbicides, uh, I have talked about, uh, you know, things to do with the herbicide with weed spectrum uh, in your field. I talked about uh, follow up crops, which are some of the things that you need to, to take into consideration when making a, a you know, a herbicide selection. You know, uh, so if, if, if you are doing more or bigger acreages, it would be very cheap to, 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 to use herbicides and they are very good, you know, herbicides uh, on the market, the likes of your dual magnum, the likes of Butler Gold, which are quite versatile and they can be used in many different crops. So the issue to do with the residual activity, you know, falls away. Uh, because of our time, Mkoma Rollins, let me end here. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Zwanai, for uh, those insightful comments. And uh, just a quick uh, questions, uh, whilst you are still there, we are, just, we are only taking about three because of our time. Uh, the first one is, is compound 
compound D, the best fertilizer for bean production. I think you can take that one, Mr. Bonzo. Oh yes, oh yes, yeah. Compound D is 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 uh, is best for 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 sugar bean production. Why? Because it does not contain a uh, boron. Sugar bean has some sensitivity to boron. So other fertilizers uh, like your 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 tobacco fertilizers, your your oil seeds fertilizers like your compound L, your soya blend have got boron. So Compound D is okay, though it's made of, uh, made of chlorine, the, the, the source of potash, there's chlorine, and your sugar bean is not sensitive to chlorine either. So it's the it's, 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 it's best fertilizer for, for, for sugar bean. So you can use your compound D, you can use your, your double D, you can use your cereal blend. So all fertilizers that are used in cereals are best for, for sugar bean. Okay, uh, thank you uh, for answering that one. Then uh, lastly, uh, can I have the name of which controls for armyworm, which was said by Mr. Zwanai? I, I talked about a number of, of insecticides. I started with spike extra. Spike extra, we carry it yet, ZFC. It, 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 it is a combination of emamectin, benzoate, and acetamiprid. It does control for armyworm. There are other products like your belt, uh, your amplico, those also control uh, uh, for armyworm. Okay, uh, thank you uh, for uh, taking that one. So this marks the end of 